hi welcome back we're going to continue looking at some practice ib questions these questions are also from a paper one or a paper one a if you're in the new syllabus so the first question says what is the formula of the compound formed between magnesium ions and hydrogen carbonate ions so all that we're doing is looking for the formula so let's write out our ions magnesium is always going to form a plus two ion because it's in group two on the periodic table, hopefully you remember that. And hydrogen carbonate, or HCO3, is a common polyatomic ion that hopefully your teacher told you to memorize, and that is gonna have a negative one charge. So remember the quick way to write out your formula is just to crisscross those charges, and those are gonna form our subscripts. And we never carry over a one. We don't have to write that, it's just implied that it's there, so Mg, HCO3, and we put parentheses so that we can carry over our two from the magnesium. And the reason we carry it over is because it takes two HCO3s to account for the positive two charge. So we have two negative ones, one positive two, our net charge is zero, in case you forgot how that works. And the answer in this case would be letter B. Let's look at the next question. It says, what is the molecular geometry of the central atom in SF4Cl2? There's something that you need to remember about sulfur, phosphorus, and silicon occasionally, and that's that they can form an expanded octet, which means that electrons can move into the d orbital um, and form an expanded octet around the atom. So because sulfur can form the expanded octet, all six of those atoms, so four fluorines and two chlorines, and it doesn't even matter where we put them around the sulfur, they're all gonna go around the sulfur. And that shape is special, it's called octahedral. There's six bonds around the sulfur. So you do need to know that. I guess hexagonal would be one that maybe some people would guess because there's six atoms and hexa is the prefix that means six but that's really just to trick you it's just ib being mean so make sure that you remember your shapes your molecular geometry of course it's not linear it's not tetrahedral that would be something that would have four bonds so the correct answer is octahedral the next question says in which group of ions and molecules are electrons delocalized in all species. So remember, delocalized electrons are free to move around. They're not attached to one particular atom. Usually that happens when there is an extra electron. And remember, when there's an extra electron, we would see a negative sign. So this already sparks my interest there because we have two negative signs. But let's go ahead and make sure that our other answers do not have delocalized electrons. So notice there are the different types of carbon. And if you didn't memorize those, you might be freaking out, but we don't even need to look at those. We're just gonna go through and look at the first molecule for each of these. So CH3COOH would look like that. And there's no delocalized electrons there. All of our atoms are following the octet rule. Both of these we already know have delocalized electrons because there is a negative sign, so there's some movement of electrons there. Let's look at C2H2, which would look something like this. So again, both carbons and hydrogens are following the octet rule. Hopefully you know what I mean by that. That means that all of our atoms are stable. There's no free moving electrons there at all. C2H4 would look something like this. And again, the octet rule is being followed. There's no free moving electrons. So remember, we were looking for delocalized electrons in all species. That's why I just went through the first species of each answer. And that's all that I have to do. Remember, we're trying to work kind of quickly to get through all 40 questions in the time frame that were allotted. So it really wouldn't be wise for you to try and go through every single molecule that you have here and draw it out. That's just not a good use of your time. So the first thing we noticed is that there were negative signs here in this answer. If 
you were like super running out of time, I would just go ahead and circle that answer and I would say, okay, I know that there's electrons there for sure. We're going to go with it. But if you do have time, you can at least go through and look at at least one example out of each of these answers and notice that each example that I pulled from, none of those have delocalized electrons. So B was the only answer that would work in that case. Let's go ahead and look at the next question. It says, which is the preferred Lewis formula of nitrous oxide N2O as deduced by formal charges? So we're looking at N2O. We do need to look at the formal charges. And the reason there's so many options here of Lewis formulas that we're looking at is because there is going to be a coordinate bond, which is where one of the atoms is going to share both of the electrons in the bond. So in this example, what I would be looking for first, because again, remember, we're trying to get through these questions as quickly as possible. We don't want to spend a ton of time. If I tried to go through all four of these and look at the formal charge on each atom in all four of those examples, it would probably take me at least a minute or two to get through all of those. And I don't want to waste that much time just on one question. So what I'm going to do is think about what are some of the rules regarding formal charges and what, what should I be looking for here? So remember, the formal charge is calculated using a formula where it takes the number of valence electrons, electrons minus bonded electrons over two minus unbonded electrons. And the goal is for all of the charges to balance out and equal zero. But another goal is that if there does have to be an atom that has a negative charge, so if there is an atom with a negative formal charge, it should be the most electronegative element in the formula. So if we do have to have a negative formal charge, it should belong to the atom that is the most electronegative. So out of nitrogen and oxygen, oxygen is going to be the most electronegative element. So if I have to have a negative number, I want it to be on the oxygen. So when I look at all of these options, A, B, C, and D, the one that looks like it could have a negative on the oxygen is this one right here. And let's go ahead and calculate the formal charges and see if we are correct. So the total number of valence electrons for every oxygen is going to be 6 minus our bonded electrons over 2. So I have one covalent bond attached to the oxygen. Remember, in every covalent bond, there's two electrons, so minus 2 over 2 minus the number of unbonded electrons, which is 6. So I have 6 minus 1 minus 6, so my charge there is negative 1. If that's not enough to convince you to circle answer B and go with answer B, we can go ahead and check the nitrogens and make sure that all of the charges in this molecule are going to equal out to 0 and the end. So let's start with the nitrogen on the left hand side. In total, nitrogen will always have five valence electrons. There's six total bonded electrons there. We have three bonds. Three times two is six over two minus on the left hand side, we have two unbonded electrons. So I have five minus three minus two, which equals zero. And on the middle nitrogen, we have our total number of valence electrons will always be five. The bonded electrons we have, we have one, two, three, four total bonds. So eight over four minus unbonded electrons is zero. So five minus four minus zero equals positive one. So in total, our formula has a net formal charge of zero, which is what we're looking for. 
and there is an atom with a negative charge, and it is the oxygen. So I'm going to go ahead and circle letter B. I'm not going to check the rest because I don't need to, and that really would be a big waste of time if we had to do that. So again, when you're looking at formal charges, remember you want the net charge to be zero if possible, and you want the most electronegative atom to have the negative formal charge. So look for one that has a lot of unbonded electrons and very few actual bonds, which is why I chose this oxygen here. It has six total electrons still around it and only one bond. So I knew there was a pretty big chance that it was gonna have a negative formal charge there. And the last question we're gonna look at for this video, this might overwhelm you a little bit just looking at the picture if you don't like looking at um, organic molecules, but it's actually a really easy question. It says, which pair of statements about electrons in this molecule is correct? So we have the number of non-bonding pairs of electrons and the number of electrons in pi bonds. Remember that pi bonds are found in double bonds. So any double bond is going to be a pi bond. So we have a pi bond here and here. So that gives us two. And if you notice, our options for pi bonds are six and eight. So you might be thinking, where, are those, where do those other pi bonds come from? Don't forget the ring that we have here. When you see a ring like that, what it means Sorry, I'm really bad at drawing rings, even through organic chemistry. I just was not ever good at it. When we have a circle inside of our um, hexagon like that, it means that there's three double bonds within it. And the reason that we draw it like that is because it is a resonance structure. So our double bonds could be like they are in this ring, or they could be drawn like in this example here. Instead of drawing both or even just picking one, the common convention is just to draw your hexagon with a circle. So don't forget that fact. Um, so within our circle, we have three more sets of double bonds, which gives us a total of six double bonds within. We had two here plus six. So our answer is either gonna be B or D, but let's look for our non-bonding pairs of electrons. All that we're gonna do so just make sure that everything has the electrons that it needs. So first things, this oxygen is going to need two more pairs of electrons because we have a double bond there. But remember, oxygen has six valence electrons in total. Two of them are used within these two bonds. So I need to draw four more. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. This one had already one, two, three connected to those bonds, but I need to draw two more. And this oxygen down here is similar. We have two bonds already. So I know that two electrons are being used from oxygen. And again, oxygen has six valence electrons, so I need to draw two more. So the number of pairs of non-bonding electrons, I added one, two, three, four, and five. And my options were three and five. So the answer here is D. So that's all for this video. If you have any specific questions, make sure and leave a comment. Or if you were confused about one of these questions a little bit more, make sure and leave a comment. I would be happy to explain further. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.